Montana Governor Steve Bullock was in Glendive on Thursday for the Eastern Montana Energy Expo. He sat down with me for a few minutes. It's been a busy uh, time. It was sworn in January 7th, the same time the legislature came. and We've really been focusing on essentially creating better jobs for Montana, better educational system, and a more effective government. So there were some great successes through the legislature. There were also some challenges and frustrations for me, for sure. Let's talk about those successes first. I think that in the past, that be it here we are at the college or throughout the university system, that tuition's been increasing. That's a tax on every working family. We made sure that actually the tuition is frozen over the next two years. We cut taxes on every business in Montana, eliminated it for two-thirds of them that pay business equipment tax. We, the only state in the country that actually got our pension system fixed without raising taxes. You know, so, and we made some great investments in education. So some great things happened along the way. Higher education, you granted funds to both Miles Community College and Dawson Community College for workforce development. I've heard from both presidents that accountability is the key to that money. You know, we know that our two-year colleges, I mean, that's where our trained and talented workforce is going to be coming from. The more the investments and the more work we can do with our colleges, all the better. But I think Montana's want to make sure also that they're getting, you know, the bang for the buck out of it. So we'll be looking at some accountability measures. What's your business perspective? And talk to me about your new Main Street Montana initiative. What we're doing is, you know, Montana's a state of 146,000 square miles. And what's going to work in Glendive isn't necessarily the same thing, but it's going to work in Great Falls. You know, so so we're, there's a lot of diversity in our state. So I'm taking a couple of the top CEOs in the country, and just like any business that's, that would want to start, you need to draft a business plan. The state has never done that. So we'll be working on that over the next couple of years, both figuring out better ways to attract and retain businesses, and also we need to make sure the government is providing opportunities, not obstacles to job creation. So we'll be working on that. To that end, you've set up a series of roundtables across the state, just one in eastern Montana in Miles City. Are you looking at adding any more, particularly in the Sydney area where the energy businesses are? I think that we set up about six of them so far, and that's just what we rolled out. We'll be adding more, and we're also going to be working in every county to get information and data and <laughs> to really try to build this off of some sort of science and thoughts. So Earlier, you mentioned challenges. People in eastern Montana are a little bit nervous about some of the vetoes. Let's talk about why those vetoes made sense. Yeah, one of the most frustrating things to me was the number of vetoes that I had. And I know that there are some Republicans and Democrats that aren't too excited about some of them. One of them was an infrastructure bill in eastern Montana. You know, going in, I said three things, one of which is we can't spend more than we... Uh, bring in. We need to keep a rainy day fund and we need to address those long-term liabilities before we actually, you know, start new programs. The legislature, when they left, they left me two things, one of which they left me 200 bills that had passed that they didn't get to my desk before, so didn't have a chance to make mandatory vetoes. And they left without doing the one thing the Constitution requires of them, and that's to actually to make a balanced budget. They were spending about $22 million more than they bring in, and our Constitution actually requires that. So we had to make some tough decisions. Now, when it comes to infrastructure in eastern Montana, um, well, when I say tough decisions, we actually had to cut about $150 million of spending. When it comes to infrastructure in eastern Montana through Treasure State Endowment Program, through additional dollars into education, through some labor dollars and others, we're putting about $40 million in our oil and gas community. Is that enough? No, we need to continue to do more. And another one of my frustrations was not only did they not give me a balanced budget, but also that it ended up that I had put together a program actually that would have been more generous than this House Bill 218 and said with record low interest rates, now's the time to actually put together a bonding program. Just like any business that's working would would actually borrow some money. We ought to be borrowing the money now, and the legislature wouldn't even take a look at it. Bonding makes people nervous. They think taxes. They think having to pay it back. What kinds of supports are you sending to the counties to help people feel more comfortable with bonding? Well, with with the actual bonding bill, it would have taken two-thirds of each house. And even though we have record low interest rates, that they wouldn't look at it. And and, and that that is a frustration in as much as... Um, now is the time to be investing to make the long-term infrastructure investments. Now, we'll continue to work on that and continue to do that through the next session to address it. But it, but, but it is important to say that, you know, 
I'm tasked with doing what also at the legislature didn't quite do, and that's making sure that we had a balanced budget. And hard decisions had to be made all the way around. Final thoughts of what people can expect from our governor over the next few months. But it's one of those things that I've really tried to work with legislators from both sides of the aisle, and I think we got some good things done. Going forward now, as the legislature leaves, my job is also as the CEO of about 12,000 employees. We're going to be working on making our government more effective. We're going to be working on trying to do the things to make sure that every Montana that wants to stay in Montana can get a job and have even a greater future for their kids. Follow Governor Steve Bullock through his website, governor.mt.gov.